Hello and welcome to the Cornish Radio Amateur Club series of instructional videos for the UK Radio Amateur Examination. I'm Rick Hall, G4PGD, and today we're going to tackle syllabus item 2D2, which we've called Working with Capacitors. So starting at intermediate license level uh, and looking at capacitors in parallel. So to determine the combined capacitance of two or more capacitors in parallel, you simply add the values. The graphic shows two identical capacitors, C1 and C2, in parallel. Imagine that these capacitors are moved horizontally together until the plates touch. The result is they merge into a single capacitor, shown on the right, with twice the plate area of the individual capacitor. As you will remember from syllabus item 2D1, the capacitance of a capacitor is directly proportional to the area of the plates. So when we are dealing with capacitors in parallel, the total capacitance, CT, equals C1 plus C2 plus C3 and so on. Capacitors in series. Now to visualize the mechanism behind the formula for capacitors in series, imagine two identical capacitors as shown on the graphic. The top capacitor has plates A and B, and the bottom capacitor C and D, and they're connected in series. And as the connection between them gets shorter and shorter, Plates B and C eventually merge into a single plate. This merged plate is not connected to anything and so effectively just transfers charge from one side to another and ceases to have an effect. The equivalent capacitor is shown on the right hand side of the drawing. It effectively has the original plates A and D but with twice the distance between the plates. Examination of the formula reveals that doubling the distance between the plates halves the capacitance. You can visualise any number of capacitors in series in this way and you will end up with the top plate from the first capacitor and the bottom plate from the last capacitor. The distance between these plates will be the combined distance of all the capacitors, thus reducing the overall equivalent capacitance. Again, you will recall from the formula uh, we learnt in syllabus item 2D1, C equals KA over D, that the capacitance is inversely proportional to the distance between the plates. This is why the reciprocal formula is used to work out equivalent capacitance of a number of capacitors in series. Don't worry if you can't visualise why capacitors in series reduce the overall capacitance. It's enough to apply this formula. 1 divided by CT equals 1 divided by C1 plus 1 divided by C2 plus 1 divided by C3, etc, etc, for however many capacitors you're considering. The way of obtaining the equivalent value of a number of capacitors differs from that of inductors and resistors. Capacitors are the odd one out. Adding the component values for resistors or inductors together uses the same formula format. Components in series simply add the values and for components in parallel use the reciprocal formula. Whereas for capacitors, it's the other way around. A common mistake is to simply add the values of capacitors in series instead of using the reciprocal formula. Moving on to full license level. For the full license, our attention is drawn to dielectric loss. A dielectric stores energy by polarizing the molecules in the dielectric material. These can be visualized as small springs able to return energy to the circuit, ideally without loss. These springs are known as polarization mechanisms and depend on the dielectric. At higher frequencies, some polarization mechanisms are inefficient 
and there is movement of charge and so the dielectric material dissipates energy as heat. In general, the higher the permittivity of the dielectric material, the greater the loss that will occur at high frequencies. It is important when designing circuits to specify the correct type of dielectric for the capacitor and the application. Different dielectrics are used for different purposes. For example, air, ceramic, mica and polyester. In general, dielectric loss increases with frequency, but some dielectrics are better than others in this respect. Although not a syllabus item, it may be worth briefly looking at the difference between dielectric loss and leakants. Now later in this course we will look at capacitors under AC conditions and while we can say that a capacitor allows AC current to flow, we will also understand that this statement does not imply that electron current crosses the dielectric barrier between the plates. It's simply the charge carriers sloshing onto and off the plates. If, however, due to the imperfect insulation properties of a particular dielectric, charge carriers do transit between the plates, this is leakance and quite different from dielectric loss. Both losses can be represented by equivalent circuits. In the next video for syllabus item 2D3, we will look at how capacitors can break down and the precautions we need to take when using capacitors. So that concludes syllabus item 2D2, working with capacitors. Thank you for watching.